first of all, if you guys don't know me, I'm Debbie Schwartz. Um, I uh, started the website Road to College and um, the Paying for College 101 group. Um, this is recorded. If you have to leave, you know, um, we'll send the link for the recording. It's also um, up on YouTube with other, uh, you know, sessions that we've done. Um, this is, I like to run these things as meetings because it's just, A, it's nice to see people's faces um, and their names. And um, if you, you know, truly want to unmute and share your, either your experience or your question, that's fine too. And I know honestly that people sent me a lot of questions in the, like the last 15 minutes. So I didn't get a chance to really look them all over. Hopefully um, I might address most of them, but if I don't, you know, um, ask your question again in the chat. Um, the other thing, I just want to thank everybody. I truly apologize that this was sent out last minute. Um, it was actually on our calendar. Um, it was uh, promoted in the Facebook group, but we had some really bad technical issues on our website for the past few weeks, sorry, past few days. And so that just ate up um, all of our time and we didn't get this out faster. So um, apologize for that, but I really appreciate that everybody is here. And one last thing is that um, and the reason why I rushed to do it this week is I'm not around next week. And I wanted to get people more of the information as all of their offers are coming through. Um, but I'll be around the following week is that like the week of the fifth or something? And so if we need to, we'll do another session. I was just trying to get the information out as soon as possible so that you guys can start doing your thing, you know, and, and deciding whether or not you want to appeal. Okay, let's um, get started. I'm going to share my slides. Oops, hold on one second. Um, and let me just get the chat up. Um, and so just give me a thumbs up or tell me that you can see the screen. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about what the appeal process is give you, um, you know, some guidelines about how to compare your offers, um, talk about if you should appeal, and if you're going to appeal, what the steps are, are involved, what you're going to need, how you're going to say it, and what you should expect. So this is just formal, you know, what is the appeal process? It's really, um, you're going back to the college and you're asking them to reevaluate the offer that they gave your student slash your family. And you, it could be um, you're going back to um, ask because of financial changes that have happened or because um, you feel that your student deserves more merit money. So again, we're gonna um, cover both branches. So um, if you're comparing your offers, and actually I didn't create a poll, but I'd love to know maybe if people wanna just put it in the chat. I'm assuming that people have um, already received um, a fair number of college offers. And some people are probably still waiting because in the next you know, week, there's gonna be like the, the um, finishing up of most of the colleges. So is that true? I'm just kind of curious, let me know. Okay, yes, someone says they have six offers by, uh, by uh, uh, so far, um, these are your students' offers. Um, I've received most of the college offers waiting on one. Okay, great, that makes complete sense. So, um, perfect. So. Uh, and I'm going to, does anybody want to share either again in the chat, if you want to unmute, was there anything that was particularly, um, I, I hate to use this word, but deceiving or anything that was hard to understand um, on the actual letter itself? Um, anything that was like, you know, you weren't quite sure what they were talking about? I have a question. It seems that, and, and, and it's not per se the letter so much, but there's merit aid that they give in scholarships, but apparently, even if you don't get their quote unquote scholarships, you could still get merit aid through financial in the form of grants, or is it called something different? You know, it's a really good question. The language here is very messy. I don't know what the language means. I know that you're either a candidate for the scholarship, you get a scholarship, it's good four years, but then they say, mm -hmm. and of course we didn't get any aid because we're so-called middle class, so I have to appeal. But then they give you merit money through financial, or do you get the merit, quote unquote, for four years through admissions? 
Okay, so this is the way I would look at it. And it's a great question, Catherine. Again, that's why I asked. The language is really messy. And so uh, to some extent, I wouldn't, I, would, I if I'm looking at an offer, I don't care where it's coming from. I don't care if the money is coming from the financial aid office or if it's coming from the merit. What you want to know and what you want to call up the school to confirm is, is this money going to be renewable? Am I getting this money? Is my student getting this money every year, regardless of what my financial situation is? That's what you want to know. Or was this money given to me for need-based purposes? Those are the two distinctions, okay? And the reason why you want to know that is obviously the first one, if it's merit money, I don't want to say it's guaranteed because there's going to be requirements, which is the second bullet point here. But um, that, that money, um, if your child makes the requirements, is available every year, right? The need-based money is going to fluctuate because it's going to be based on your FAFSA. That's really actually like another difference. And yes, sometimes colleges might um, see you have a financial need and end up giving you merit money. To me, again, it doesn't matter why they gave you the money. You just know that now that you have the money, what are the, what, what's the requirements going forward with that money? Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, so, and you're right. And the language is, is, I could tell you what I think the language is, but it doesn't matter because you want to make sure that you know what the language is that the college, that particular college is using. Because again, every college might say, my, my version of a grant means this. My version of a scholarship means this. You want to know from that school what they're, what they're meaning with that language. Okay. Um, so, uh, go, so going through this, um, should you appeal? So one of, if, if you got um, need-based aid, right, you want to make sure, did I get um, need-based aid as the college says the, the percentage need that they need? So, um, you know, hopefully by this point, you guys are familiar with like the financial aid numbers. And one of the numbers um, that, you know, we've all looked at in, in um, kind of doing college research is what percent does a college meet of a family's financial need? It could range from 30% to 100%. The 100% obviously are the very, very, very generous elite schools. Um, but if you, I would calculate what the percentage need met that you got on your financial aid. So I, so you'd need to know what your need is. You'd need to look at your cost of attendance minus your EFC, right? And then of that number, how does the financial aid information, um, grants, money that you got, what percentage is that of your need? If it if it equals, you know, what the college said that they were again going to give, then they met their requirements, sort of say. Um, if it's less, I would go back and ask them why. Um, so that would be kind of one reason why you might want to go back to appeal. Um, so the other thing, uh, the next bullet point is about requirements for merit money. If you know your student was given merit money, you want to look carefully at what those requirements are. They are mainly going to be, um, you know, GPA, and that's actually for the money going forward, um, like to make sure that you feel comfortable that your student can meet that GPA requirement. The other um, point about looking at the requirements for the merit money is um, your student might have gotten a certain amount of merit money. And it depends on the college. If the college was transparent on their website and if the college kind of made it clear, you know, these are the requirements you need for this bracket of money, um, then uh, you want to compare, you know, uh, my, you know, my student had a certain GPA. Did they get the bracket of money that we thought we were going to get? This is the reason why I'm bringing this up. And I had this example, and I think I might have shared it already in another presentation. Um, a few weeks ago, a parent messaged me and they said that their student did not get the um, scholarship money that they thought they were supposed to get based on the GPA that they had. Well, it turns out and that the, they, were, they were looking at their student's high school GPA and the way the high school calculated it was different than the way the college calculated it. And they were just on the cusp of getting the first tier scholarship amount versus the second tier. And so um, if they had not brought that up to the college's attention, if they hadn't questioned it, um, they would have walked away with the, you know, the tier that they, they were offered. In this case, the college was willing to kind of recalculate the GPA and take into consideration um, the information that the family provided. And so they were able to appeal and get the next level up. That may or may not be the case with the schools that you're applying to, but look at if you know what the requirements are, if they make it known, you know, how did that compare to your student and did you, and therefore what tier of scholarship did you get? And if you think there's anything off, 
then that's another reason to appeal. Um, so I'm going to go really quickly. Um, we have a tool called Compare College Offers. It is 100% free. It is, I, honestly, I call it a crowdsourcing tool. It's for all of us to use, um, meaning um, all, this, all the families here. Um, so you're going to, I'm going to give you a quick a run through. You're going to be able to enter in your students' offers, and then you'll be able to see other people at that school who have off, also entered in their offers, and you can compare. You'll be able to compare the stats, how much money they got, and, and that's the way I would use it, you know, meaning, um, so somebody actually asked me the other day, they said, I can't remember, I think it was University of Delaware, their student got, you know, um, $12,000, should they appeal? And the first thing I said was, did you go to compare college offers? Is there anybody in there right now who's getting more than $12,000? And there was. So at least it showed that there is, you know, a little bit more that, that, that the school is willing to go, at least from the information we have. And then, um, you know, uh, whether or not that student had the, the stats or the 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 um, hook that what that school wanted to give more money for that's another question but at least you know that they're giving somebody out there you know um, more money than um, than the offer that you got so let me quickly switch the screen and show you compare college offers and then we'll continue sorry if I'm going fast I am trying to get in a lot uh, for you guys today. Okay, can you see, this is the homepage of Road to College. Can you guys see that? Yes, okay. I'm just showing you here so you know um, where uh, to find to compare college offers. So um, if you click on products and resources, you'll see compare college offers, and then you click on that. You could, if you want to, and I'll share the URL right now, you could also go directly to it. Here, let me just share the, the, um, the URL. Thank you so much for keeping to um, admit, um, admit people in. I see them constantly <laughs> um, at the, in the waiting room. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, this is the home screen of Compare College Offers. And, um, and the way we have it set up, this is this year, every year we're gonna make an improvement. Um, but the way we have it set up this year is you would, if you, if you don't already have an account, you would enter in your email here. I'm not going to do it because I have I have an account. You'd enter in your email. You say, you know, are you a parent? To tell you the truth, um, even if you're a professional and you want to enter in an email, I'm sorry, you want to enter in offers, I would say you're a parent. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So everybody should just say you're a parent, you know, click off, you know, you understand the terms and conditions. And then if you press verify, you will get an email um, with a password that then you will then use to log in. So we generate the password for you. If you really want to change your password, you can after, that's um, up to you. Um, so the other, only other thing is, if you know you did this, just do me a favor. Most people, it's going into their regular inbox, but you know it could possibly go into your, your junk or your spam folder. So just look there. It really should come within like a minute or two. So look, look in all your folders if it doesn't come through. And if you really have problems, let me know. So um, I'm going to log in because I already have an account. Um, so when you initially log in, let me just show you, it's going to ask you to fill out um, this information on top. Pretty mm -hmm. basic, what state um, um, do you live in? What's your student's unweighted GPA? Hopefully um, you know that or can kind of give an estimate of it. And the reason why we're asking for unweighted is that most schools are using unweighted for comparison. So we're trying to crowdsource the unweighted information. What's your EFC? There'll be different ranges. I don't, we don't, I don't need, nobody needs to know your specific EFC. We just want to know, like, are you, you know, between 30 and 40,000? Are you above 60,000? Are you between, you know, 15 to 25,000? We just need to know kind of where you fall in the spectrum. Um, and then what your student's test score was if they took a test score. And there's going to be an option. You can say, my student did not take a test score. Yeah. That's fine. Or you can say, my student took the SAT and this is what it is. And they also took the ACT. You can put in all those combinations. So, um, and then you're going to enter in the school um, that your student you know, um, got their offer from. I'm just making this up and then I'm gonna go back and delete it. So let's just say um, Drexel. So you'll pick Drexel. You will say, 
So even if your student um, had a test score, you can also tell us they did not, they, if they did not send it into a particular school because some students still took the test, but they decided school by school whether or not um, to send in their test scores. Mm -hmm. And we wanna, know, we wanna know this information. We're not really showing it to you on the other end, but the reason why we wanna know, actually, sorry, we do show it to you. But the reason why we wanna know all this about test scores this year is we're hoping that we get enough information on the back end, quite honestly, to do some good analysis. You know, we are making this assumption that colleges didn't give any preference to students with students with test scores. We're making the assumption that they didn't give any differences in money between a student who sent in a test score or not. We'll never know, right, until we actually see the data. So we're hoping to get enough of that data to see, you know, did they kind of follow through with what they were saying? Hopefully they did. That's all we want to use the data for. Um, I'm, I know that you guys have a lot of questions coming through. Let me, I'm just, I'm going to go look at chats but let me go through this um, uh, walkthrough first. Um, so you can say, um, my student applied with or without the test scores. You can also say at this point, um, my student applied, they got in, we got no money. So we wanna know that too. So, um, you know, um, even if it was a school that you knew you weren't gonna get money at, we'd like to know that your student applied and they got in. Um, so you can click the, you know, they applied, we didn't get any money. This makes it go, go faster. And then tell us, um, at this point, um, we already have people who had, uh, entered in the information for early decision, but um, maybe you didn't and you want to enter that in. So just tell us what um, admission phase, you know, uh, your student applied. And then you're going to um, really simply um, tell, uh, input what information was, did, was the student offer based on financial need, like you had a financial need and the, and the, and the um college gave you money for that, whether it's, you know, two or three grants, sum it up and tell us that you got, you know, $20,000 based on your financial need. That would be, you know, here. And then um, the next line is, uh, what money did you get that was not based on your financial need? This is the merit scholarship money. Again, it could be one, it could be two, sum up whatever that um, money is. Uh, hopefully, you, you will know it's renewable. We just put this check mark here to get you to think, to make sure, just as we started this conversation, make sure you're looking at which money is renewable and which money is not. Really important to understand that distinction for your own planning um, for the next four years, which is another conversation we should have about how are you looking at the four year costs of this college. But for now, we're just focusing on you know um, uh, college offers. Um, and then if, the, if there was any, like, you know, um, if you got Pell Grants, um, you know, uh, you can specify that. Um, if you wanna tell us this is helpful, not completely necessary, but helpful, you know, um, how much of the federal loans did you give it, get as subsidized versus unsubsidized? Um, if, again, if you wanna put in work study. And um, we just actually added this, this um, about private scholarships. It has nothing to do with your actual college the offer from the colleges, but if your student might have applied to private scholarships, um, tell us that they got the money. And the reason why we're asking is, and I'll put it in like a thousand dollars, is that if you tell us that they got private scholarships, we're trying to start to track if you know if that college is stacking the money or not. And what that means is um, some schools, the if you get a private scholarship, they reduce your need-based aid. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there's just so many schools, they all do it differently. Nobody's really attempted to kind of gather that information. We're just starting it, You know, if we're going to crowdsource it, the information, we're just asking if you know whether that school is crowds, if, is, if stacks the money or not. So it's, it's the start. So let me put in an example here. So this is um, Drexel. I'm making this up. I'm going to delete it. So, so um, don't worry. So let's just say we got uh, $25,000 in, um, uh, uh, in merit money. So uh, I have to say that it's renewable. Oh, I have let me just say it was um, regular decision. What else am I not? Um, oh, okay. Let's see. Why else is it not letting me go through? Hmm. Oh, I know why. No, it's not. The, um, I have to say whether it's stackable or not. Let's just say um, I don't know. Okay. Um, so I hit save 
Okay, and now I can compare my offers. So it's going to show me a um, a chart of all the offers that um, you put in for your student. It's just a summary. You know, it's um, a quick way. We just do the math for you at the end to show you. Whoops. Um, you know how much is that? What's the net cost to you? And when we calculate the net cost, we are only taking out. Um, any need-based money that was offered and any um, merit scholarship money is offered and Pell Grants. We are not taking out um, the federal loan because that's a decision that you'll make whether or not you want to take the federal loan. We're not including work study because, you know, in all honesty, even though they give you work study, it's not always guaranteed that your student can get a job um, as work study. So we don't want to rely on that money. So this is just some quick um, numbers so that you can compare you know, college to college. Again, these are one-year numbers. Um, on a different presentation, we'll talk about four-year numbers. Um, okay, and so that was comparing your own offers. And then you see at the top, you can compare other offers. Okay, so all of a sudden now, because I entered in Drexel, I can see everybody else who entered in information for Drexel. And as you can see, it is anonymous. As you can see, I, we never ask for your name. We do know your email address but that is not shared with anybody else. We don't share this information with anybody. We're not using it for um, you know, marketing purposes. It's not shared with colleges. It's really just for the community of families. And um, we're hoping to do analysis on it. So um, you can see Drexel, we already have a lot of offers, you know, um, like six pages of offers. You can also see, we've been doing this and each year we've gotten a little better about how we've um, collected the information. And we've been doing this for three years. The first year we started out with, with um, honestly, a Google form and we just collected some of the information that, that year. Last year, we got a little bit more sophisticated and created you know, um, a web page. This year we're kind of making the process even faster and smoother. So, but if you wanted to, you could go back to some previous years um, and look at the information. Um, it's more just, Interesting, I'm not sure that I would necessarily use that like last year's information now just because because of the pandemic and things have changed and shifted so much, but I would definitely be looking at this year's information. And we've sorted it. So um, it is kind of in order of these EFC ranges. So you can look at all the EFC ranges, but you could also kind of skip ahead to like your EFC range, which, you know, maybe if you're getting um, merit money is probably going to be an EFC of 50 or 60,000 and above. And, um, you can go look at uh, what state the school, the student was from, um, what their GPA was, if they entered in an SAT or ACT score and what type of money they got. One huge caveat, I would not use this information. Somebody's asked me this multiple times. I wouldn't use this information in your appeal. You know, the college does not care that you looked at this tool and found another student um, that got more money from yeah. you. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's more informational for yourself to kind of see what's happening at that school. And quite honestly, if there's room, if you see another student, um, another student that's been offered more than, than your student um, and they look close in stats, then that would say to me, I, I should be appealing because, um, you know, for whatever reason, my student didn't get um, the full amount. Okay, let me just, Debbie, uh, yes. I have a, yeah, but you see, this is the only statistics we really have from this year to use as a bargaining tool. You said to us, oh, if you think that our students are in the top 10%, then we should definitely appeal merit. But how do we know what the top 10% is? Okay. okay. Lane says if you get a 1420, you should get aid. So does that mean, I mean, how many schools really say if you get 4.0 or a 1420 or a 1500 of the SAT, we're giving you 30,000? What are we using as ammunition if we can't use your statistics? Uh, well, okay, well, um, two things to what you're saying. One is um, uh, you should know the statistics of the particular school, right? So. Right. Okay, so, so so you right, so you can look at, you know, based on the statistics, where did your student fall? Did they stop did they fall in two lanes top 10%? Right? How do we know what two lanes top 10% is? They posted? Um yes and no. Um, so on my other tool, College Insights, we only give you the top 25% because it's a, a but if you want the more granular detail, go to Tulane's common data set. 
And there they should, they will break out, um, or at least the numbers are there. You might have to do a little bit of math, but the numbers are there to look at um, what percent of their students, uh, their incoming students, what percent of them have a GPA of this amount of, you know, over in the top, what it would, it will show you what the top 10% GPA is of their incoming students, what the top 10% SAT, ACT score of their incoming students are. That information is in the common I data set. I didn't want so um, I would pull at this point, you, um, I would get granular and pull up um, each school's mm -hmm. common data set that you're trying to appeal to. And then, and then you would have this, you know, the statistics of the whole range of the students that there, are their incoming students. And then you can compare where your student falls. Does that make sense? So we just put whatever college we're interested in and put common data sets and it's going to pop up. Hold on, common data set. Let me um, yes. type that in. So I'm going to say Tulane. This is how I would type it into uh, Google Tulane common data set that's it and what will come up and you want to um there might be other companies that and actually i gotta admit we're one of them that our link might come up um but go for this purpose go directly to to lane's website and use their you know exact common data set information and and use the latest Quite honestly, the common data set deadline just passed, like schools had to submit that information. Some schools truly might have their absolute date, latest information and other schools might have last year. All you can do is use what the most um, up-to-date public information is. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that that is compare college offers. Um, that was, you know, maybe I took a little longer than I wanted to, but um, it's really simple and quick and easy to go enter in your students' offers and um, compare and look at um, uh, what other people are getting. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this and go back. Um. Okay. Oh, okay. Did somebody have a question, Teresa? You're raising your hand. If you want to unmute and ask. I had no question. I okay. just had my, my hand next to my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to um, move on. So um, uh, should you appeal? These are like the kind of broad categories of why you would appeal. Um, you know, in, there's not going to be any evidence of this, but um, we are seeing at some schools that the first offer that they're giving students kind of feels like a low offer. Um, and again, you might be able to tell that by looking at compare college offers. Um, you might even want at this, for this purpose, look at last year's offers. And so um, that's an okay, I mean, you're not gonna say to them, I think you gave me a low ball offer, but for the purpose of you deciding whether to appeal, you can you know, kind of say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to appeal because I don't, I think my student deserves more, not just because I want them to have more, but maybe you looked That's on right. the um, maybe you looked on the website and um, you saw that they were very close to the next tier um, of the of the requirements for a scholarship. Um, maybe there were things that changed in your student's situation. Maybe they took the test, took an SAT ACT test, and they didn't submit one earlier, but now they they have a score that they think is better. Maybe their grades increased. Maybe they got an honors award. Anything like that that is an improvement from what they when they sent in their application, that would be um, a reason for me to 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 appeal um, merit to appeal merit. Um, I just want to, I'm sorry to interject, but this is for everybody because I was trying to appeal merit, and when you call admissions at one particular school, they say we gave out the merit money. Go to financial aid if you need money. And then when I go to financial aid, they say, oh, yeah, you can appeal the merit. Send me all the stuff that you're just talking about. So the issue is, who do we even appeal merit to? Because 
they're, they're very like nitpicky. That's why I asked my first question about the scholarships. They're very like protective about their 10 scholarships and yet there is merit money and I get tossed around. Right, right, right. Sorry to hear that. Meaning like, I mean, unfortunately each school kind of has the prerogative about how they want to handle this process. Um, you know, you have to almost step back a little bit and think of these as private businesses. They are private. Like, you know, Tulane's a private um, college. They are private businesses. They can kind of, they are giving out their money, particularly if it's, well, either if it's merit money or need-based money, and um, they can dictate how they want to handle the process, unfortunately. So, I mean, I all I can give you is best practices. Like, I think, and then you kind of have to follow the college's lead. So in your case, you know, I think you did the right thing. You sent it to the... Um, um, admissions office, if they bounced it to financial aid, maybe they wanted financial aid to kind of look and make sure there wasn't um, any need-based money that they could find in your case. And then maybe they bounced it back again to admissions. I guess my suggestion is patience and perseverance, uh, honestly, you know, um, and I would, I would just keep in a respectful and gentle way, chipping away. You know what I mean? Like this is where um, being a good consumer and not taking no for an answer, you know, can can help you. Um, and so, you know, just keep saying, are you sure? I, you know, it sounds like, um, you know, it's not pleasant, but you, you're probably going to have to follow what they're asking you to do. Again, I would just start with best practices. If people are um, appealing merit, it should go to the admissions. If you're appealing financial aid, it can only go to the financial aid office because the admissions has nothing to do with that. Um, so other reasons why you might um, uh, be appealing there, you might have realized that there was an error in your FAFSA or your CSS profile happens too often. Um, and then the other bigger category uh, that we're going to talk about is special circumstances and special circumstances is going to relate to need based aid. But OK, so let's but even though I'm talking about special circumstances and need based aid, you might not have gotten any need based aid now. But because of um, changes in your finances that the college doesn't know about yet, you might then become eligible for need based aid. OK, so two important terms, um, professional judgment and special circumstances. So professional judgments, it's actually um, a, uh, uh, um, it, it, it's the government has given financial aid offices the capability to kind of go in and look at a family's circumstances and make changes that might not comply with the FAFSA or the EFC formula. Um, so they're giving admissions offices the, the, the right to over, override anything that um, FAFSA might have said based on that admissions office's um, professional judgment. So that, you know, they're, they're, that is why the term makes sense. And the reason why um, a financial aid officer might go in and make these changes is because um, of a special circumstance. So, and honestly, he, these are the exact special circumstances that are listed um, in the, um, on the federal government website. So, um, you know, the biggest one is you've had a change um, of employment, which obviously has um, impacted your income. I'm, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm sure there's actually going to be a ton of those this year because um, the FAFSA was based on your 2019, you know, taxes. Things have changed dramatically for so many people. And so if you're in that category, then um, don't be shameful. And, and tell the college exactly what has happened. In all of these cases, What's most important also is to show documentation, have some form of proof. Just don't write a letter and say, I used to make this and now I make that. And then they have to just believe your numbers. You have to show documentation that something has changed. Um, you know, you have to show um, maybe it's unemployment. You know, maybe actually at this point, you know, if you have your um, 2020 um um, income tax, and there's been a dramatic change, or even if something has happened from January to now, um, if you, you know, pull together whatever documents you have and use that to say, my situation has changed, here is how it has changed. Um, so, and then the other purpose for special circumstances is that um, 
the you know FAFSA does not ask for all the details that are related to your financial life. And here's a chance to show some of the financial details that maybe the FAFSA didn't ask about, but um, that are fall into one of these categories and impact your financial situation. A big one is related to medical um, expenses. And it could be, you know, it's not just medical expenses for your student, it's medical expenses for your family. So if something had happened in your family, whether it's a parent or another sibling that um, caused a lot of expenses, um, then show that because it, obviously those expenses are draining on the family um, finances, which it's the family finances that are being um, used for FAFSA. And that's how you're helping to pay for college. Um, somebody uh, wrote me and I quickly saw the question. I can't remember. It might have even been about a student's a sibling's private school that they had to pay for because of changes that are happening with, with COVID. That's actually valid. You know, if something has changed in your life uh, for a, a per, you know, a, a, and you've got a real um, explanation behind it and it took a chunk of the family's finances that you had been planning to use for, um, you know, paying for college, or if it was a chunk of the finances that um, were included in um, in FAFSA, then um, detail that out to the financial aid office, explain what happened, explain the numbers and show documentation. That's my um, best advice. And use the word, I have had special circumstances and I would appreciate if um, the college can, uh, can use their professional judgment to review my case. If you use those two terms, they will know that you know what you're talking about. And so, okay, I'm um, sorry. I wanna go back one more thing and emphasize here. You, you may not have originally fell into the category of receiving need-based aid. You know, based on your 2019 taxes and your EFC and the FAFSA when it was calculated from 2019, it may have appeared as if you did not have need-based aid. Again, if something has changed between 2019 and now um, that has impacted your family's finances, um, you can appeal to financial aid even if you didn't get need-based aid. So um, somebody give me a thumbs up if that makes sense, because I, I think a lot of people are going to fall into that situation. Thank you. Okay, merit scholarships, should you appeal? Um, I don't want you guys to take, and I saw at the beginning, um, you know, we got six offers, we got nine offers. You're not gonna appeal to nine schools. You're not gonna appeal to six schools. You're gonna narrow it down to the top three schools. You know, however you wanna narrow it down. If you wanna narrow it down, you know, based on the money they gave, and, I, and I, when I say you, I'm talking to you, know, you and your students. Um, do you want to narrow it down based on affordability? You want to narrow it based down the, the programs that they, that they have there that your student wants to you know, go to, but narrow it down to the top three schools that um, your student is most interested in. Um, and um, start to compare. You don't want to compare just the dollar amount. You don't want to say, oh, college A gave me $10,000, college B gave me $15,000, but it turns out that college B, um, their um, tuition was much higher than college A. You want to look at the percent of the, that the, you want to look at, at what percent of the um, cost of attendance does the merit aid represent? And I want to make, I may not be saying that clearly enough. So let me give an example. So if, um, the merit aid, if, if the cost of attendance of a school is $50,000, right? And they gave your student um, a $5,000 merit scholarship. So they're giving you a 10% um, merit scholarship. Maybe that's the way you should, I should say it. You should convert your merit scholarships into percentages of cost of attendance and then compare the percentage. So if a $50,000 school gave you $5,000 in merit scholarship, that's a 10% merit scholarship, okay, versus a school that's $60,000 and gave you the same $5,000. I'm not going to do the math, but we know it's less than 10%. So let's say in that case, it's an 8% merit scholarship, okay? And then and then look at all of these schools. Um, and then take the school that gave you the highest percentage and use that as the leverage against the school where your student really wants to go. Does that make sense? Any, any like thumbs up or questions about that? 
Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, that is the most important thing because the colleges don't want to know the number, right? Because it means it's somewhat, in some ex extent, it's meaningless to them. Um, it's it, it, what's what's more meaningless to them. What, what's more meaningful to them is what percent of the total cost did that school give as the merit scholarship. So Paul is asking, of course, um, and I know there's a ton of other questions. I'm just catching this last question here. What about the selectivity of one school versus another? We got better offers from less selective schools. That's absolutely going to happen, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I like to kind of look at the whole college space as business. It is business. It is an industry. You know, just apply all your business um, knowledge and frameworks to it. So there's a pecking order, right? It's it's a brand pecking order. Um, so the more selective schools feel like they don't need to give out the same amount of merit scholarship money, even though they might be giving out merit scholarships, even in the in the um, spectrum of the schools that give out merit scholarships. There are some that are more generous with their merit scholarships and some that are more stingy with their merit scholarships. And that's probably related if we did a, a graph, it's related to selectivity, even within the schools that are offering merit scholarship money. Um, you know, um, you may not have that like exact comparable school like, um, you know, Drexel and Northeastern, they're not even like, you know, completely comparable, you know, but, um, but at this point, I would just give it a shot, you know, this year. Um, I, I wouldn't kind of compare, uh, I don't know, let, let me give you an example. I, I wouldn't kind of compare like a huge different in selectivity of schools, but if they're kind of close, like within like, you know, the same, with, if they're within 25 rankings of each other, even though I hate to use rankings, um, I would um, I would, I would use the, the, the schools to compare because I'm not, I, to tell you the truth, I, I'm not even sure what's really going to happen this year, meaning um, schools got a lot of applications. We all know this. And technically, there were fewer students that applied. It's just that the students that applied kind of flooded the, the uh, market with applications. This is causing havoc for the colleges in terms of their yield because they probably had to accept more students than normal because they were not quite sure who's going to be accepted at multiple schools and go to different places. There's also going to be a ton. I mean, we know this. There's a ton of schools on the wait list and how they handle the wait list um, is still an unknown. They're probably going to go to their wait lists earlier. The end of the day is the colleges want to um, fill all of their seats. Um, and so they're balancing the need to fill their seats versus the budgets that they have for merit money and how much can they give out to attract students. And some schools might wait a little bit longer to give out more money because they want to see how things settle out um, in terms of which school, which students are going to accept at different schools. Um, so that's, I kind of mentioned it to Catherine earlier. Um, my two words are perseverance and patience. And patience is that you have nothing pressing you other than your own nervousness and maybe your child's nervousness to accept an offer until May 1st. So the longer you wait, you might, the college is going to see how things shift out. They're not going to rescind. They're not going to take back the offer, right? So you have the offer. Um, and the longer you wait, they might get an idea of their situation. They might get a little nervous. They might say, I'm not getting um, the yield that I want you know, fast enough to, that, to that make us feel comfortable that we're going to fill all, all of our seats. You know, student A still hasn't responded. They're a student we want. You know, let's go offer, uh, go offer them $5,000 more. It happens. We see it happen. Um, sometimes you have to go back and ask kind of as it gets closer to May 1st and you say, did any money free up? Because that also happens, right? Some students are accepting at other schools and then they decline and whatever merit money that school might have given that student, it kind of goes back into the pot. So a combination of um, money gets freed up and the, and the um, you know, admissions and offers has that more money to kind of move around um, or they get a little nervous about their yield. So um, that's again um, to, the, to the patient's point. Sometimes you have to ask kind of that last week before no, before May 1st, has anything freed up? Um, sometimes they will just reach out. And if you read some of the stories in the Paying for College 101 group, people were like, oh my God, the school just reached out and said, here's another $5,000 because they want to make sure um, that that student's coming. There was even a story, I got to go back and find it. I should have had it um, for you, where somebody 
said their student went to um, decline the offer. And at the moment where they declined, the, student, the college came back and said, oh, no, wait a minute, we're gonna offer you more. Like, does that change your mind? So there's a lot of things happening this year. Um, okay, and the other thing that might, that you wanna look at, as I mentioned earlier, have there been any improvements in your student situation? If there's been just one little improvement, um, I would include that in when you go back and ask for more merit money. And, and then the other thing is that, you know, to, this is a little harder in my last bullet point, but if there's something you think that's a little bit more unique about your student, like maybe um, you're from a state that you know that that school um, doesn't get as many students from that state. Um, you know, maybe your student had a really particular interest um, in a major that that college is trying to build up, you know, their, rec their reputation in that major. It, this is definitely harder to figure out, but if there's some little hook that you think was the reason why your student was accepted, then play that hook up, you know, like say, I know we're from Montana and you don't really accept a lot of people from Montana. And we would love to be, my student would love to be a student that represents Montana at your school, you know, like, so, um, it's a little harder to figure those things out, but if you know, and if you have an inkling, use it, you know, in your letters. I say letters, it's really emails. So what are the steps involved? Um, you know, to Catherine's point earlier, I would look uh, at the school's web website. Some schools actually lay out their process. They say, this is the form we want you to use. They usually lay it out more specifically related to need-based financial aid appeals, but they'll, they'll say, this is the form you need to use. These are the documents we need to have. This is who you send it to. So check first, maybe the school is very specific um, with how they wanna handle the process. Um, so if they're specific, then they're gonna want you to follow that process. And if you go a different way, they'll probably say, please reference the website and follow our procedures. Um, if you can't find it or if it's unclear, then it's also okay um, to email the school, call them and say, do you have a process for us to, you know, appeal um, our, the offer? You know, this, it, it's a, um, a little bit of a gray line about who should be doing this, you or your student. As much as your student feels comfortable, um, I would have them do some of this, like that question about how do I appeal financial aid? Do you have a process? Like they can make that phone call, they can send that email. Um, that's not, you know, intimidating for them. It shouldn't be. Um, I mean, to, to, and and as much as your student is willing to be the front person, the front guy, I'm going to say it like that. I think that the process the process will end better. It doesn't mean that I'm saying your student should handle this whole process themselves. You know, like say go go ahead and peel Johnny and just tell me how it how it comes out. I mean, you're going to help them. You're going to be like, you know the best back end support there is. Um, but if um, you work with your student and say, let's write this letter together, and it has a little, you know, like um, a tone that's coming from the student, um, that, the, that the student sends it, you're gonna help get whatever financial information you need to pull, you're gonna pull the documents. But if it has that feel that it's coming for, from a student, I do think that that works well because um, it's showing um, the student's involvement, it's showing the student's desire to really attend that school. And at the end of the day, the other people at the other end, you know, um, are humans too. And, um, you know, they are maybe on the financial aid need side, they're a little bit constrained by rules about what they can give and, get and not give. But on the admission side, they're not as constrained by rules. And so the more that your student can explain why it truly is the number one place for them, why they think that they'll th um, th thrive there, what it is that they can bring to that campus, um, you know, I think it's just much more of a touching letter. And then you kind of have all the numbers behind it, or you say, you know, I, my student, I was, my student, or I was, my, I was offered, you know, this merit percentage at another school. And, um, it's financially easier for my family to send me to that school because that college gave me this money, but I really want to come to your college. Um, so, um, let me see if I missed anything in, in the steps. Uh, you're going to look to see if the school has their particular process. You're going to be comparing your own packages. You're going to draft a, an appeal letter. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what's in the appeal letter. You're going to um, obviously ask for merit, more merit money if that's your situation. Or if you're asking for need-based money, you're going to be detailed about why you need more need-based money. And you're going to give them documentation. 
And then, um, you know, it can't hurt to follow up. Again, every school is gonna have like a slightly different timeline. There have been schools that I've heard people say within a day, they turn around and give you a response and others that um, you know, are waiting a week or 10 days. So um, I would wait a week and maybe follow up with an email. Again, this is a fine email that your student can follow up with and just say, um, what's the timeline? When do you think I'll hear back because I'm trying to make other decisions? Okay. Um, uh, we've, I think we've talked about this, but I'll go over it quickly. You're going to need to say, we say letter, it's email. Um, Deb, you're perfectly fine sending an email these days. Um, there's a debate, and I can't tell you which is like, there's no statistics that say the people who send an email do better versus the people who call. I think it's a little bit um, based on your comfort level, maybe your student's comfort level and how they want to handle calling. Um, but there are stories and examples in the Paying for College 101 group of people saying, I just picked up the phone, my student and I got on the phone and we talked to them and they just made a decision then, you know, there and, and then. And that's usually related to merit scholarship. Other people said, no, I thought it was better. I wrote the letter and they had all the information that they needed. Um, I can't say one way or the other. It's gonna be, you know, based on your comfort level, um, and how well you think maybe your student can advocate for themselves on a phone call. Um, that, you know, is, I do think is a little higher skill level. So you might be more comfortable writing the email, um, but you know, you guys have to decide. Um, if it's for a merit, asking for more merit money, you are gonna wanna write it to the admissions office. Hopefully you can even know who the admissions rep was for your region, um, because they're gonna be probably the first person who looks at it and they might pass it on. So find the admissions rep. Um, if it's financial aid, um, you can call or email the office, ask is there someone specific you should be sending it to, or if not, then I would send it to the director of, of financial aid. Um, have your supporting documentations, have patience. So what should you say? Um, this is, a, it's actually not a hard letter to write. You're just gonna start off obviously your student has been accepted. That's the reason why you're appealing. So that's the good news. And be thankful. Um, say, say, we are so thrilled, you know, or if it's coming from the student, my student, you know, I am so thrilled to be accepted at the school. Um, I am so grateful if they did give any money. I'm so grateful for the, you know, merit scholarship money that um, I was um, offered. Um, and then maybe give a few lines about why it's their top choice, um, how they think that they can fit in there or what they bring to the school, um, what they're looking to uh, study and how they can be, you know, a good um, contributor to the, to the student, um, to everything that's going on at the school. And then if you're appealing for merit, I would, you know, say um, something to the effect of, and again, if this is coming from your student, uh, this is my top choice. I really want to go there, but my not my family's you know can't financially swing it. That's not the right words, but my family can't um, you know is having trouble um, uh, paying for you know for the um, the funds that um, paying for the gap that we need to pay for. I have have other offers from other schools where they're giving me a higher percentage of merit money. You can if you wanted to, you can say you know. College A is giving me 10%, I'm sorry, College A is giving me a $10,000 merit scholarship. And then in parentheses, right, that's 10% of their, of their um, cost of attendance so that the school that you're appealing to has a sense of the numbers that you're talking about. And um, you could say, if you, know, you were able to give me more merit money, um, I, uh, I know my family and I would be um, very, my family would be very willing to help um, send me to the school and, and financially figure it out. And I would be thrilled. Something you know, to those effects. Um, and if there is a, a specific dollar amount that would make the difference, you can put it in. I can tell you, they're not. If they gave you an eight thousand dollar merit scholarship and the number that you need to make it doable is you know forty thousand dollars they're not gonna go for that specific number. But if like, if it's within, I would say honestly, maybe $10,000 of the number that they gave you, I would put in a specific dollar amount and say, um, if I were to get um, an, uh, a merit scholarship amount of $18,000 and maybe you have, they would give you $10,000, I know that I could definitely be able to attend this school. 
And then, of course, if there's been any changes in um, what, what's going on with your student for the good, for the better, let them know, include those improvements. Do you need to show a, um, send a copy of, of the other offers from the other school? I, I honestly don't think you do. I mean, maybe they'll come back and ask, but I think um, they kind of generally know. I mean, if it seems realistic, you know what I mean? If you're not you know, lying and saying, you know, I got a, you know, I got 50% off at this school and you only gave me 5%, you know, they might kind of say, well, either A, that school is really in a different league than we are, or that number doesn't sound right. So I think if your numbers are reasonable, you don't have to show documentation. Okay. I have a question. So what if the school has one unique scholarship like full tuition and your kid is an alternate. So my daughter wrote a beautiful letter and said, you, I mean, it's it's like they could have split the scholarship they did it. What if they really want her? I mean, obviously the money is there. Can you finagle a partial, even though they only theoretically offer one of these amazing scholarships? The um, money's there, it's all in nomenclature. Well, yes and no, to tell you the truth. I, I There are, scholarships that have special like requirements behind them and it's not that the college is making it could have been a donation right you know and that's why um you know um the the requirements are connected to that scholarship so i i honestly don't think that they you know uh, i think that they have to kind of follow whatever the rules are for that particular right. scholarship um i would just hang in there i would just say you know and do you know for sure your daughter is an alternate have yes they, they said in the letter she's the alternate so what does that mean that they're waiting they're waiting for the person who was granted the scholarship to say yes or no? Yeah, so my prayer is that this kid makes Harvard and says I'm out of here. <laughs> but you know, you never know. You don't know. Right. You don't know. I I would just I, I mean I wish I had better information other than to say hang in there and just keep in a gentle, nice way touching base, you know? So who, and, admissions? Yeah. Well, yeah, because it sounds like that cuz that's an it sounds like that that's an academic scholarship. Yeah. Yeah, I would keep touching base with admissions because maybe at the end is a big maybe, maybe at the end they can't give her that exact scholarship, but maybe they will realize that they, that, you know, she wants to really come and that they're going to have to increase something to give her something right. above what, um, you know, they originally gave her. Oh. Now, should she be the one who's contacting them or me? She, I think in this case, for your the example, I know, Catherine, you've written me, um, I would have her because honestly, the, at the at the level of scholarship that, that she's going after, it would show like her maturity. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. No problem. Excuse me. Yes. So when we're appealing, as you're discussing, should we reference the specific school if we're talking about another offer we received that's a little more, or should we just be generic? You know, school A, school B. No, offer I think this. you can be specific. You can be specific. No harm Thank in you. that. Yep. Again, it just shows you're not like kind of pulling numbers out of the real air, like out of, out of nowhere. You're a student, got an offer. And I would say from, you know, whatever, um, Marist, you know, and this was the dollar amount and this is the percentage of the cost of attendance. I think all of that information also shows that your student is kind of in the know, you know, that um, uh, and, you know, um, these, these, they want this to be an emotional decision right? Because we all don't make good decisions when it's purely emotional. Um, and you can't take the emotions out completely of this decision, but it should be um, a, a very strong financial decision as well. So, um, and, and by the more information you give them, I think it shows them that, um, you know, you're not going to be swayed just by the emotions of, of what's happening. So um, to those people who have offers, I would start if one of the offers is a top school for your student. Um, I would start appealing now um, because we're getting close to. I mean, you know, it's not April first yet, but um, you know, the next few weeks are going to be busy for the admissions office offices for lots of reasons, right? There um, for the schools who haven't sent out their acceptances, those are going out. Um, for the schools that have sent out acceptances, they're now trying to make sure that the kids who they've given acceptances to are gonna you know, say yes. Um, they're getting these appeals. It's busy. I wouldn't wait that much longer. I would start um, getting it out. I would also, you know, I, one other thing I will say is, um, I'm not going to tell you to rely on this, but you can go back a second time. 
don't think about um, um, just because they, if they, A, if they say no, I would um, go back and say um, something about, you know, are you truly not, um, a, you know, a, a giving any appeals for merit scholarship um, or, um, you know, because, you know, if, if there's not going to be any change in what you offer, there's absolutely no way my child can go. Um, so this is, you know, I haven't taken a class on negotiation. I feel like I'm going to, but this is pure negotiation strategy, right? The person who has the patience and can hold out the longest probably is going to do the best, you know, uh, because, um, you know, in the last week of, um, before May 1st, college is gonna have a really good idea of what their numbers are. And if they're not where they wanna be, they're probably gonna go back to the people who haven't accepted yet and say, and they're gonna go back to the top people who haven't accepted yet, right? They're gonna go back to the, the students who they really, really want at that point, And then they, they might be giving out more money. So what's the most, what's, what can you expect, right? Yeah, there's a possibility that they can say no. Why would they say no? They might say no because their yield is looking good and they feel comfortable that they don't gonna need to give out any more money because um, the numbers are coming in the way they expected. They might say no because um, even though they accepted your student, your student isn't kind of at the top of, this, of, of the range of students they accepted. So they might say no because they're gonna give money to another student who they really wanna come and your student they accepted, but maybe they're not in that top range um, of, of what the college is, you know, is trying to lure. Um, you know, if you get a no, I would you know, go back gently one more time, but at least you tried, right? You're not in any other, you're not any, in a worse off situation. Your student has still been accepted. Um, so you just now have to make a decision about how that school ranks relative to the others and whether you can afford it. Um, a lot of cases we're seeing um, colleges come back and give, you know, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars more. May not it may not co cover the gap you're looking for, but if you got five thousand dollars for sending in an email, um, that's you know twenty thousand um, dollars. So it can't hurt. Um, and sometimes depending on what your circumstance was, depending on if you had tremendous you know, financial changes, um, you might get significantly more. Um, if your student is like in that top 5% um, and they really want you and you show that your student got an offer from another school, they might really bump it up. Um, so again, the, the example, and I don't have the numbers, but the example that I talked about that somebody shared in the Paying for College 101 group is the student declined and then the college came back and said, well, we'll give you um, a full, full tuition um, scholarship. Will, will you come for that? So obviously that was a top student that that college wanted. They waited to the end. And when that student said, okay, well, I'm not gonna come. They're like, okay, wait a minute, one more time. Here's, our, here's my best offer. So um, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Okay. I can stay on for like a few minutes. I know that I didn't get to um, the uh, a lot of the questions here, but let me let me scroll through. But I have to tell you, I, this is the third time I did this presentation. Um, I'm just telling you this because I'll send in the follow up email um, a link. I put a page together of all the questions that we've gotten to date, and so um, your question might be in there. So I'll send that, and, and you can kind of um, scroll through if I don't get to your question now. Oh, okay. Sally's asking, how would you know which major they are trying to build up? It's subtle. I mean, there's not, they're not, they don't have like an alert on their website. Boop, boop, boop. You know, we want more environmental, you know, environmental studies majors. Um, uh, you can ask the admissions office or your student can ask the admissions office, like, you know, um, uh, is there, are there any priorities that the college has in terms of, um, are they trying to attract or build up certain majors? Um, it could be in the strategic plan um, or the, the colleges put out like a, a statement of what their strategic objectives are that's on their website. Um, it's, it's, it's subtle about trying to figure that out. I can't say that there's one way and I can't even say if you directly ask the college, you know, what are your strategic objectives this year that they're going to tell you the truth. But, you know, if you can poke around another time, another place is it could be um, looking at um, press releases. Uh, I'll tell you that my daughter 
uh, went to, or goes to, sorry, she's still there, goes to Northeastern. And about two years ago, they got a huge donation um, to create um, the com a new computer science uh, building. I bet you, you know, they're going to put much more emphasis on, even though computer science is a popular major, of bringing in the top computer science students based on that on that donation. So that those types of like press releases and news also give you like a hint about where the student the, the college is focusing. Okay, if a student received the highest merit they 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 give give, is it okay to ask for more money? She has been accepted into a very competitive program. Again. I would say it cannot hurt. Just be grateful when you um, write the email, grateful that your student got like, you know, um, an, a tremendous amount of merit. And all you can basically base it on at that point is say um, that the merit money is still, even though you got a great amount of merit money, that the cost to attend the school is still a little out of reach for your family. Is there any more that the college can give? Right? I can't tell you whether they will or not, but it, it's worth trying. Uh, yep, I've heard it's a, it's a good idea to wait a little longer than mid-April to ask for more aid. Um, I mean, yes, I guess how I would rephrase that, Jacqueline, and say I heard it, uh, that I'd say it's a good idea to wait before you um, accept. I would keep waiting before your student accepts. This year, I would go um, in, like, honestly, now um, and start appealing. I don't think there's going to be any benefit in waiting. Do you think? Oh. Deposits for um, uh, paying a deposit. Uh, you know, I, again, that's like at the heartstrings. People are like, um, oh, I have to send in this deposit because um, I have to accept because my student needs to get the best housing. Um, I don't want to say, you know, it's not the truth, but well, if you, so some deposits are refundable and some deposits um, you can give the deposit and you're not really telling you that, that your student is being, is accepting. I would make sure you understand that difference. So there are some schools where you can give the deposit for the housing if that's of your concern. Um, it's probably likely that you might lose that money if your student does, doesn't go there, but by giving the deposit, it's not telling them that your student is, is accepting to going uh, or it, 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 your student's not telling them that they're absolutely attending. I would just make sure to understand that distinction. Um, and I, I mean, you know, I don't know um, about if you want to pay the deposit. It's I guess it depends on um, if you're willing to lose it. I mean, that that's the bottom line. If you want to pay a deposit and then potentially lose it because um, your student ends up going someplace else. But I would not um, accept the offer and then ask for more money. Uh, I, I, people, I think, I don't know if that question is here. I know, I think I got that email. If your student accepts, kind of like you're done with the negotiation, you, you, right? Um, so don't accept and say my student's attending and then ask for more money. The only case where that's gonna work is if you had some major financial change that happened after your, your student accepted. So for a student, for schools like University of Chicago that don't accept merit until sometime in April, is it acceptable to proactively reach out if a student has higher than their average stats? Um, if I would, there's not going to be any um, value. If, if, it, if, it's, if the school has not announced their merit scholarships yet, um, um, then uh, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't contact them before they've announced their merit scholarships. Um, I would get, gather all your information um, if you think you've got you know, an improvement in your student's situation, but there's no value in, in reaching out to them before they've made their announcements. Okay, how do you um, ask for aid comparing in-state tuition versus private? The gap is typically large. Um, absolutely, this is gonna come down to the percentage. You're not gonna look at the dollar amount, right? You, I mean, you're gonna look at the dollar amount to do the calculation of what the percentage of that merit is of the cost of attendance. I'd be curious at that point if the percentages are far off. They still might be because public schools are not gonna be as generous as private schools. Um, am I going to tell you not to appeal? I'm kind of under the, I try, I go the route of there's no harm in appealing. The only downside is you will get a no. So, but you probably have to be prepared if you're an in-state school, if you're an in-state student, you're probably not going to get that much more. Um, you know, state schools just don't have um, the big budgets to 
give plus if you're an in-state student, your in-state tuition is lower. So when you do those percentages of what the merit um, uh, award is, you might find that it's not so different than the private, but um, so look at the percentages. Uh, I think my kid accepted the package he got of subsidized and unsubsidized in merit. Can we still appeal? Deposit is paid, but another school is cheaper with out merit, both are state schools. Um, so this person is saying their student basically accepted um, and they put a deposit down, but they have another school that is cheaper. Honestly, I don't think that the college is gonna, it, you can try and appeal and I don't, but I'm not sure that the college is gonna do anything because you basically said, I'm going to take your offer and I'm coming. And here's the money for my deposit. You know, the only thing you could decide is you could decide that my student is going to go to the school that is cheaper and then you would lose your deposit. But that's the only um, kind of action I think you have at this point. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's why I say to people, don't have your student accept. There's no need to. They don't have to accept yet. Okay, so Teresa is saying, and, um, that she found an, an error in the Compare College Offers tool. Um, she says that SUNY Binghamton is in New Jersey. Of course we know it's not, it's in New York. I apologize. If you find a data error, please let me know. Um, I can't say we're perfect. We um, don't have a huge budget, budget to create these tools. So if um, there is an error like SUNY Binghamton being in New Jersey, please let me know and we will correct it. Okay, medical bills happened in this year. Can we appeal the financial offer? Yes. If as long as it doesn't matter when the medical bills happened, as long as it was between your 2019 taxes and today, you know, um, if something happened that significantly affected your financial situation, share it with the um, college. Um, it's valid to 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 bring up what happened. So Maria is saying the need based aid minus their, her EFC. The need-based aid is uh, of what of what I'm assuming what you're saying here is that um, the percent of need met was not honored. I've had that situation um, happen with some other students. And um, all you can do is go back to the college, go back to the school, explain what you're seeing, Maria, that um, the need-based aid that your student was offered does not the same is not the same percentage of the need met that they claim that they do. Um, you know, again, there's no laws about any of this. The college is saying this is generally the percentage need met that we offer. Um, but that could be, they could be viewing that as an average. So they could be saying for some students, we give a little less, for some students, we give a little bit more. Um, I would go back and ask. That's definitely a valid reason to appeal and understand how the decision was made to not give you the same percentage need met as they claim that they give to other students. Okay, let me pick one more and I do have to run. Um, some, yeah, somebody is saying, and it's a little late for you guys in the process, but if you have a, a younger student, somebody saying, this is why you should apply to several schools. Um, we do tell the families that um, we, uh, work with, which we do it, we have like a, a group coaching service. We tell them this actually that to apply to a few more schools than you might normally to have the options. At this point in the process, it's all about your options. So if you apply to a school that you knew was generous um, and might even be more generous than the other schools that your school student really wants to go to, you have a leverage school. And so I'm just saying that it's a little late in the process for everybody here, but if you have a second child, you might wanna think about that approach when you're creating their um, college list. What do you think about the student stats and merit? Oh, um, I, you know, um, Patty what, is asking, what do I think about the student stats and merit post on co college confidential? Do you think that's useful information? I, in all honesty, I haven't looked there for several months. I just don't have the time, but, I think when I remember looking at them, I think it's valid. You know, I would definitely compare that information. I um, can't hurt. Uh, 
Uh, what happens if your student's not accept um, receiving anything but the um, student loan offer? Um, again, you can go back and appeal. And if you have another offer, merit offer from another school, explain that. Um, and uh, um, it, you know, just because they gave you no merit money, uh, it doesn't mean that you can't ask. In fact, I helped a family um, like two weeks ago and their student, or they, they actually had done this before they even um, talked to me. Their student had gotten zero from Marist. They had gotten money from another school. Their student really wants to go to Marist and they just basically explained that. And they said, um, you know, we, this is really my number one choice. I didn't, you didn't you'd get any merit scholarships, but I got merit scholarships from this other school and Marist came back. I think they came back with $15,000. So just because you got nothing doesn't mean that you still can't apply or sorry, appeal. Okay. Um, I am going to run. I will send a follow-up email. And in that email, I'll also put a link to a sample um, uh, financial aid um, offer that we share. Um, you could also Google sample financial, let me find if I can find the um, link right now, fan, san, uh, sample financial aid letter. And um, if you actually put in road to college, you'll get the one that's on our website. Here it is. Here's the link. And I guess what I um, just kind of ask of all of you guys, wait, here's the link, is please share your offers and compare college offers because it helps you, it helps people, other families in this year, it will help up us do analysis. And the more information we crowdsource and we make transparent, um, you know, uh, the more information, the better it, it, it it, it, the better it helps the process for families. And hopefully over time, we can kind of break down um, the lack of transparency that's happening in the system. So um, you can use that link to find a sample letter. I think there's actually two or three sample letters there. Um, share your information and compare college offers. Ask questions in the Paying for College 101 group. Tell us what type of success or what, what um, reactions you've gotten. Um, and, um, you know, um, if, you know, send me a question if you need to. I can't promise I can get to everybody's, but if it's a quick question, I can probably respond back um, fairly easily. Okay, guys, good luck and keep in touch. Bye.